in part two of our Star Wars Reality Composer animation, we'll have a look at how we can create this little action sequence. In part one, we were looking at how to make the animated text for the Star Wars intro, the long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, and our Star Wars crawl text. In part two, we're gonna learn how to make an animation with some of the Star Wars fighters coming directly at the screen for a bit of a dramatic animation and to learn how we can use different behaviors combined together, such as orbit and spin, but not through a full duration, but parts of a duration. We'll have a look at three different ways to create the animation, an easy, a medium, and a hard. Let's start with it easy. I'll open up a new Reality Composer project and choose a horizontal anchor. Tap on your cube and tap delete. Tap on select to edit and tap delete. Tap on plus in the top right hand corner next to play to open your content library. We have already downloaded some of the models from Sketchfab and we're using ones that have Creative Commons license so that we can use these models in our project. To download a model from Sketchfab, tap on Download 3D Model. From the file formats, choose USDZ as this is native to Reality Composer. Tap Download. Tap on the AR Quick Look icon in the top right hand corner. Tap on the Share icon in the top right hand corner. Tap on Save to Files. Your 3D asset will now be saved into your Files app and you can import this easily into Reality Composer. Tap on Plus to import your file. Let's bring in the Death Star first. Import in the X-Wing and the TIE Fighter. Now we need to reposition and scale everything. Tap on the TIE Fighter, tap and hold on the green ring and drag inwards to resize. We're gonna use our arrows and move our TIE Fighter so it's up higher and back away from the Death Star. Tap on our X-Wing and we're gonna rotate it around to the front. Tap and hold on the blue ring and drag in to resize and move backwards. You can turn on the side to check where your objects are and we can see that our TIE Fighter is sitting a little bit forward. So we need to drag that just a little bit behind our X-Wing fighter. What we wanna do is have our X-Wing fly forward past the Death Star, followed closely behind by the TIE Fighter. So let's add in some of those behaviors. Tap on your behavior menu, tap plus, and choose custom. For our trigger, let's choose scene start. Tap on our action sequence. As this is the easy animation, choose move, rotate, scale two. On affected object, tap choose and choose our X-Wing fighter. Clear our position and rotation. Turn around your screen so you can see from a horizontal angle to see where the X-Wing needs to fly to. Tap on trigger and then tap back on the move rotate scale two card. Use the arrows to drag forward the X-Wing fighter. Tap play on the move rotate scale two card to test this. I'm gonna change the ease type to ease in and now test again. If you think it's going too slow, you can either drag the distance out further or you can make the duration shorter. I'm gonna turn the screen back around to see what it looks like when it's flying towards me. Let's add the behavior for the TIE Fighter. Tap plus next to behaviors, choose custom, tap on trigger and choose on scene start. Tap on our action sequence and choose move, rotate, scale two. We'll pinch to zoom a little bit. Tap choose on affected object and choose the TIE Fighter. Now what we wanna do is have our TIE Fighter dip down to the level of the X-Wing and then shoot along after it so it looks like it's chasing it. Clear the position and the rotation. Use the green arrow to drag the TIE Fighter down and move it forward a little bit. Change the ease type to ease in. Tap plus next to action sequence and choose another move rotate scale two. Make sure your affected object is chosen. Change your ease type to none. Clear your position and rotation. Pull the TIE Fighter down and drag it all the way forward. You might have a bit of trial and error to get it into the right position. Tap play next to action sequence to test. Now it's going a little bit slow. We know that our X-Wing is quite fast, so let's change the duration of the first part. 
and the second part and tap play to test. Tap play next to AR to check the whole scene. Feel free to change the timing or the distance that these travel. In the medium animation, we're gonna get the TIE fighter and the X-Wing to orbit and spin around some objects that we'll have hidden. At the moment, we can see them. They are two small spheres that we've made look metallic just in case we don't put on a hide behavior. So it kind of looks like it could be space junk anyway. If I tap play, I can test out this sequence and see what it looks like. So you can see that we've kind of added a little bit of a spin to create a little bit of drama in here. Let's look at the cards for our X-Wing fighter. So we're starting with a scene start for our trigger. Our first action sequence card is move, rotate, scale two. And if we drag around our screen, we can see that the X-Wing travels just towards the sphere that we've added in. Then we've got two cards joined together, an orbit and a spin. If we tap on play of each of these cards, we can see what they do. When they're separated, they don't seem to make a lot of sense, but when we combine them together in context, what happens is the X-Wing seems to spin and move past that circle. Tap on play to check all of our behavior cards. So you can see it looks like the X-Wing fighter ducks down underneath the sphere and then does a circle to come out. After our spin, we've added on another move, rotate, scale two card to keep the X-Wing flying forward. Let's tap play again to see what happens in this scene. Our TIE fighter performs in exactly the same way. We have a trigger of a scene start, a move, rotate, scale two, where our TIE fighter moves down. We have a second move rotate scale two, where the TIE fighter approaches the sphere and we have three cards joined together. Move rotate scale two, orbit and spin. If we play these cards separately, they don't really make a lot of sense, but all together, they combine to create some interesting effects. Our last card is also a move rotate scale two, where the TIE fighter continues to chase the X-Wing fighter. So our spheres, which our TIE fighter and our X-Wing orbit and spin around, we hide them when we tap play or when the scene starts. So we've added in a behavior with a trigger of scene start and an action sequence of hide. And on this card, we've chosen to hide both objects at once. We've made sure that the duration says zero, so it doesn't hide to fade out, but hides instantly when we tap play. To add in your spheres, tap on plus to open up the content library. In your shapes, choose a sphere. Move, scale, and change the material type. This will be the sphere for our X-Wing fighter. Tap on the sphere and duplicate. Move back just a little bit and across and scale to make this one a little bit bigger. This will be the sphere for the TIE fighter. Now we can add in our behavior cards. Pull our X-Wing fighter back so it's just in line with our sphere and we can zoom in to check this. You may need to drag your sphere down a little bit or even our X-Wing fighter to the side as we want it to spin or orbit around this. Tap on plus next to action sequence and the first thing we're gonna do is choose spin. Choose our object. At the moment we have the duration for one second and we have the iteration at one spin, clockwise and yaw. We can see the spin looks wrong. So I'm gonna change from yaw to roll. If I tap play on the action sequence, let's see what happens. As the X-Wing fighter approaches the sphere, it will spin next to it. Let's add on our orbit, tap on plus and choose orbit. Our affected object should be the X-Wing fighter and the center should be our sphere. Tap choose and tap on the sphere. We're gonna join the orbit and the spin card together. I'm gonna to tap and hold on our orbit card and drag and drop it on top of the spin card. If I tap play now, let's see what happens. So it kind of looks like it's spinning and going backwards. So maybe there's something going wrong here. Either the X-Wing is too far forward coming into the spin or it's too close to our sphere. 
So sometimes we need to do a little bit of trial and error to test. It also could be things like aligning to path and clockwise. If we toggle on align to path, let's see what happens now. So it performs really weirdly and that's not what we want to happen. Let's change orbit direction to anti-clockwise and check this. It's kind of a little bit better. It doesn't really matter if we chose clockwise or anti-clockwise. What we need to do is change the position of the sphere, move it away a bit and move it forward. Do a little bit of trial and error until you get the position right. We want the X-Wing fighter to finish in front of the sphere. So let's drag it forward beyond the sphere and tap play and see what happens. So now it seems to spin around and land in front of the sphere. Tap add to add in another move rotate scale two card. Make sure this is dragged to the end of the sequence. Clear the position, turn your screen around, tap on the card and drag the X-Wing right past the Death Star. Tap play to test. So it looks like the X-Wing fighter is flying directly to us, does a little bit of a spin to get away from something and then speeds forward. See if you can have a go at adding a similar sequence to the TIE fighter to get the TIE fighter to look like it's chasing after the X-Wing, spinning around the sphere and continuing faster. If we come back to our example and check our behaviours again, you can see that the TIE fighter performs in a slight different way to move down, move forward towards the sphere move closer and up towards the sphere, orbit, spin, and then continue forward faster. Don't forget to add a hide behavior into the action sequence to make sure the spheres disappear and it looks like the X-Wing and TIE Fighter are magically turning through the air. The hard part of the animation is to try to add in a laser beam to look like the TIE fighter is shooting the X-Wing fighter. Let's tap play to see what we've made. It looks like some laser beams are coming at the X-Wing fighter. We'll tap play to see what we've made. So we're trying to get it to look like the TIE fighter is shooting at the X-Wing fighter and the X-Wing fighter is having to spin and roll out of the way. For the laser beams, we've downloaded part of a lightsaber. Let's check the card sequence. We have on scene start for our trigger and then we want our objects to hide. As we've positioned them where our TIE fighter is gonna fall down to, we need to make sure that during this first movement, we cannot see them. So our duration is set to zero and our motion type is to none. They're gonna wait 0.3 seconds our next card is show over 0.1 seconds. We've chosen both objects to be affected and the motion type is move from rear. If I tap play on the show card, you can see it appears to move forward like it's being shot out of the TIE fighter. The next card is move rotate scale two. And this is where our laser beams get shot and move along towards the TIE fighter. And we've chosen the move rotate scale by card as we can affect two objects with this one card. We've also made sure the duration is quite quick so it looks like it's accelerating through the sky. And for the last card is hide, to make sure the laser beams look like they're disappearing or moving off into the distance as they're getting shot out. So we've chosen both of the laser beams for our affected object. We've got a quick hide of 0.1 seconds a motion type we've chosen as move to front. Our ease type is ease out. Let's tap play to test this action sequence. To put the cards together, it's a lot of trial and error to check the duration and where everything is moving to. The hardest part is to position where the laser beams need to start in relation to where the TIE fighter makes its second movement and trying to line it up so it looks like it's being sh and then trying to line the laser beams up so it looks like they're being shot out of the TIE fighter. You can work on adjusting any of it. You can even duplicate the laser beams to make it look like you've got two sets of laser beams coming out. Let's make our Death Star move as it has a USDZ animation on it. We've added in a behavior with our trigger card of scene start. On our action sequence, scroll near the bottom and choose USDZ animation. Now our Death Star comes with a spin USDZ on here. Obviously we can also choose a spin card, but let's just add on a USDZ animation to see how it works. Choose the affected object of the Death Star. Our duration is already quite long. 
and we've only got one iteration. Our iterations is how many times this animation loops through, not how many times it spins for this particular one. If I tap plus on iterations, it'll make the time longer. Tap play on the USDZ animation card to test. And you can see it moving around slowly. Let's test all of this scene out. So that's a bit of fun using different behavior cards, importing some external USDZ files or some external 3D assets and putting them all together to create a bit of a Star Wars animation.